What's up? Yo, 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 podcastos. We are live. We are rolling. We are digging. We are hunting. We are here. How's it going, Podminos? You all good? The weather outside is a bit frightening. It's uh, it's dirty down here in the south. We've had amid storms like the rest of you, I suppose. Um, I've got my mate here. He's, uh, he's fluent in English. It is big bad boy Sai. How's it going, guys? Right, Sai, mate. All right, Dan. What have you been up to, mate? Oh, well, I've been looking at your uh, Facebook posts, mate, most of the week. Uh, with all there? this bad weather. Yeah, just been trolling your posts. Well, I have been out doing a bit of work, but yeah. we um, I, I like to keep you all guys entertained on the old Facebook group. Yeah. We're going to go straight into the old competition oh oh yeah and um it was that the we made a decision didn't we i think we did and the winner is of the first podcast oh Cyan dan's treasure hunting finalist was billy fox with your lovely lovely accent well done mate yeah you've won an awesome prize um Give us a quick message, mate. Send us your address, and we'll get it shipped out to you. Ideal. It's Congratulations, straight, Billy. Coming straight from nice China. Ha- nice ha- axe head, mate. That yeah, was really cool. Yeah, it was cool. nice. Really yeah. nice. Bronze Age. Yeah, there were some other really good finds there as well. Uh, there was a couple of rings, weren't there? Yeah, and, uh, Vicky nearly won. Yeah, but um, it, we went more on the, the basis of history. Yeah. The ring was nice, but... The accent was was awesome. So, guys, next time we're going to do one of these every single month. Get your artifacts in because when Billy put, shows you a photo of what he's won, you're going to be a bit jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well done, Billy. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, well done, mate. So, sorry. What else? What have we been up to, mate? Well, oh. you've been. Uh, I heard you got kicked out of Windsor Grounds. Oh yeah. Well, I was uh, <laughs> trying to film. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like it too much, mate. <laughs> so I was trying to do a documentary at Windsor, and they um, they, they, d- they didn't really the appreciate the drone either. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've been uh, holding the fort while you've been gallivanting around. Yeah, I know. I popped down to London for a historical visit. Try and visit a few of the old, uh, yeah. you know, ancient places around London. It's nice, isn't it? Down there. But the weather was pretty shocking as well. So uh, same as didn't really get down. Didn't get really to do much like I wanted to do but just the way it is but yeah anyway but I was sitting looking on uh, the old uh, computer yeah looking at your bloody uh, Facebook posts all I'm week keeping them busy going on about El Dorado I think someone even told me to shut up with the stories <laughs> <laughs> so I was, what, tell us a bit more about this post this El Dorado post then oh it's a, obviously El Dorado is uh, El Dorado originally the legendary ruler of Indian town near Pagoda. He was believed to... <laughs> near oh, where? <laughs> but, you know, you must have heard of Pagoda. Pagoda, okay, yeah, yeah. Pagoda, <laughs> eh? He was believed to plaster his naked body with gold dust during festivals, then plunged into a lake, Guatativita, to wash off the dust after ceremonies. Yeah. His subjects threw jewels and golden... Golden yeah. showers, basically. <laughs> oh, nasty. <laughs> First YouTube strike. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> no, um, he was lavishing golds and all kinds of jewels and stuff like that. I think it was a coronation ceremony. Yeah. So when yeah when they had a new king, uh, where, I think it, where is it? Whereabouts that? Is that in it's Colombia? Like, is it modern day Colombia? Yeah, it was um, the jewels and the golden objects. Um, it was in the the Spanish conquistadors i think it's called conquistadors yeah conquistadors and uh, that was the tale before the 1530s hmm. and that was in uh the city of amaga which is off the caribbean and from peru the spaniards from the yeah. caribbean and from peru well you know what's quite interesting on this uh bit of research i was doing earlier they they were talking about peru and then they were saying uh when the spanish conquistadors were there yeah they they uh I think they took hostage one of the actual kings. Okay. And he started saying something about um El Dorado, you know, the golden city, That's everything's right. made of gold, blah blah blah. Yeah. And um Well the the, the the actual El Dorado came from the mean of entire fabulous country of gold. 
and, yeah. and the cities of Mano and Amigo in the quest for Gonzalo Pizarro. Yeah. I think that, yeah. And obviously mm-hmm. you had our famous Sir Walter Riley. Oh, yeah, yeah. He went to go and have That a, was it. That was your Facebook post, wasn't it? Yeah. Epic man. He, he, he tried his hardest to, to go and find it and try and source it. And they were back in the days without the old metal detectors and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. I mean, what, what's amazing also about South America is um, the old Inca tribe. I mean, there was also that old Max. Yep. Uh, there was quite a, there's quite a lot of people over that region. I yeah. think they were saying the Inca population was around about 20 million people. Yeah. Which, you know, it seems to be quite a lot considering um, the jungle, even though everyone thinks it's very fruitful, okay. is actually not. The soil is really bad. And uh, what they found around these old Inca settlements... Yeah. Is this uh, this what is characteristic of the areas of these big dark patches of earth, like compost, okay. and they call it terra plata, or terra plata, ah, terra plata, yeah, ah, the old terra plata. <laughs> but yeah, apparently there's a, it was man made, yeah, and uh, they think it's some kind of organism or some kind of combination of like micro microbiotics, micro, yeah, kind of stuff, yeah, which is basically making itself perpetuate. How is it? Yeah, um, but what they've done tests, right? They've had people um, plant crops in this stuff for 20 years. When they take all the crops out, it's still the same content in the soil. Really? Yeah, yeah. And what they were saying about this soil was when you've got 20 million people all living around, you know, the Amazon and the jungle, uh, you actually need agricultural farming. Okay. for To, to um, you know, support a population of that size. Yeah. So, yeah, without actually having this super soil... The Aztecs or the Incas, Almax, all these people, they wouldn't have been able to grow and expand like they did. And they, they thrived as well, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massively thrived. I mean, also, I mean, that's one big secret. Maybe that is the El Dorado. That is the treasure. Because El Dorado also come, uh, apparently was a mispronunciation of the word from Inca. Inca, that's right. Which actually meant wealth. I mean, El Dorado is obviously Spanish. But what they translated from originally meant wealth in Inca. Yeah. So it was the city of wealth, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just a bit of an well, interesting it was, fact. It's it City of the Caesars, wasn't it? O- Otro and Mijoko, um, they're the search. They're, there was a rapid exploration in the 1600s with the Spaniards trying to find this treasure, going back and forth. And they were adamant it was, it was there. Yeah, and and they're constantly looking for it. And there, I was reckon ba- that, there was lots of battles as well. I reckon it? they've given the runaround, mate. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Well, you don't know. We're still lost. They got gold fever and got greedy. So, so you Brazilian lads out there, and the old, um, he's still out there having a looking around because they they search for it all the time. I think there's some documentaries. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of lads that follow us on the, the old FB that are out there actually searching constantly for this stuff. So and they do pick up quite a bit of gold. To be fair, yeah, so. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean these these tribes they didn't use gold as a monetary value. It was it was yeah. spiritually based. Yeah, that's right. Which um, you know they made statues. It was for offerings. Yeah. I mean they never traded in it. Yeah, yeah. It was only when the uh, you know the Europeans come over and saw what they had, and they were just like, wow. <laughs> I mean, but there must have been mines around there to to mine that amount. Yeah. Of uh, of gold to make gold statues the size of yourself. Well, you, you all, know. all the rivers like they pan it and they're, they're they're pulling out loads and loads and loads of gold. Like, well, I've been told by Brazilian friends of mine when they first made their cities, like you just said, there the rivers and the floor uh, on the floor, whatever there was just, just gold. There was gold everywhere. It, yeah. You could go there and pick up nuggets. So, guys, if you I don't next, know how true that is, though, next but. next visit on a holiday. Don't be going Ibiza. Get yourself a <laughs> ticket to a Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that Peru, as well. Not only that, Dan, as well. Yeah. Um, the conquistadors were given kind of like this runaround about finding the El, um, you know, El Dorado, and um, I think they couldn't have looked very hard because they missed Machu Picchu, yeah. which is one of the biggest places in Peru, tourist places now. I think it was discovered in about nineteen. 19- 18 yeah i think it's about yeah somewhere around then but i mean that's that's just an amazing place i've never been it's one of it's on my bucket list looks cool um but yeah it's they've um 
Uh, is that the one where they've carved out the mountains and stuff? Much of Pichu? I think it is, yeah. Oh, we could edit this bit out anyway, but... Yeah. No, I think you're gen- I think it is. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, they've also found this scientist. He's also found another place, which is towards Chile. And uh, they found some text in the book saying El Dorado was like seven weeks walk away yeah. from this place. So these people have actually gone on this trek and tried to remap it out okay. like the old fashioned way, actually, by walking it. That's cool. And um, but, this, but this chap, he's, he's decided to um, get some funding and he's funded a, a satellite, an imaging satellite when it's gone over there. Okay. So he's paid for it to be rescheduled and moved. And then he's taking pictures of this location, which is in the middle of absolute nowhere, you know, millions of square miles of jungle. Yeah. And what they found is a uh, a big square mountain. How weird. Yeah. Which he thinks it's completely artificially made, man-made. Like a temple sort of thing. Yeah. A temple it could possibly gold. a temple, possibly a, a settlement. It could be anything, mate. I mean, they haven't actually got to this place yet. Well, it's quite hard to get to, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, yeah it's, 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 a, it's a trip and a half. But yeah, that's that's what we know on the... I don't know too much on the El Dorado, but I know the legend Sir Walter Raleigh, he, he made two attempts and um, they both failed miserably. And um, it cost a lot of money. If you want my opinion on it, I don't think there was any gold treasure to say, like a hoard to find. I think there is gold... Uh, in abundance but yeah. i think it's a bit like the old klondike it's you've got to dig for it you've got to get quarrying yeah. for it sort of thing mm-hmm. it's in the mountains it's in the rivers yeah yeah maybe it's just one of those metaphorical things like you say it's in the land so it's yeah. uh, the land of wealth or <laughs> or whatever sounds like a really good place to be yeah it's cool man yeah moving on anyway we're gonna um if if you guys are liking our content um, please, can you give us a like and subscribe? It only takes two minutes to hit the thumbs up button, um, just to know that we, we know that you that you're there, and we can um, carry on making some videos. We um, we had a bit of a fail last night. Um, we started. We're going to do some product review on um, metal detecting, treasure hunting stuff. I broke Dan's magnet. Yeah, we're going to get to that side, <laughs> and he nearly broke my finger. He thought it'd be funny that we try and put these magnets together to see how strong they were touch magnets oh my god <laughs> the earth moved <laughs> i think, they, I think it's two ton of pressure on these magnets and so i decided they just clamped them. together boom i was like oh <laughs> it went didn't it? yeah it was crazy i was like watch my fingers i like, oh, don't worry about your fingers snap, snap. <laughs> yeah it wasn't, it wasn't good but yeah we started doing some product review on these items so we're gonna make some videos we've done some testing last night and um we're gonna do a bit more, bit more, bit more tech stuff, and then yeah, so that'll be quite cool. That's yeah, a new adventure. Yeah, upcoming videos. We've got a review one of the three in one sand scoop. Yep. I, also, the two uh, two magnets. Yeah, the the sand scoop's a good one. I won that. I won mine. You had to pay for yours. I paid for mine. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Raid Laidlaw, uh, MD UK. Uh, massive shout out to you guys with your party on the Saturday night. It starts at eight o'clock. Guys, get yourself over to Ray's party. Grab yourself a couple tickets. The prizes are unbelievable. So he runs a gig from eight o'clock at night. Um, and then if you enter before the Wednesday, the following week, he has a midweek um, entry so you'll get a free entry for 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 the midweek um if you put your monies in before that entry does okay. that sound right no, say it again <laughs> i got in trouble last time for this yeah yeah <laughs> anyway all you need to know is get your tickets get for wednesday tickets night and wednesday saturday night <laughs> and saturday night forget what i just said ignore it <laughs> also massive shout out to soilers we sponsor these guys bish big bish um, I think we're having a dig with Bish, aren't we, at the weekend? Yeah, I think so, mate. We're going to have a little dig. little dig. So we, what we do, we um, chuck a live up, and then um, we can show you what's going on on Facebook, come across Facebook, and then on the, the following Tuesday, we'll have a video up. I think we're going over to the Wassa field. Oh, we're not going there, are we? Oh, you don't like it, there. Oh, it's a bit creepy, isn't it? <laughs> Every time we go there, we get some weird anomaly. Yeah. Like the cameras die... <laughs> Or oh, we get weird voices. Literally, we had like half bars on our phones 
and on the GoPros. We left the field, and as we left the field, I tried making a phone call to the missus, and there was nothing. And I said, sorry, chuck me your phone. And his phone was completely dead. It's, it's, this field is weird. Yeah, you're right, mate. <laughs> it is a bit weird. Everything was dead, wasn't it, within minutes? Yeah, it's crazy, man. I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's... I mean, there's a lot of power lines and stuff running through there. Nah, it can't be that. But I've been watching that... Um, you know, I watched some paranormal programs oh, on that okay. stuff, so... You okay. know, I don't want to get too much into it, but because it's not scientifically based, but uh, you never know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? <laughs> Sam Mundo. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah. yeah, massive shout out to Soilers. Um, we're going to be catching up with them. Also, a shout out to the Cy and Dan Facebook group. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have, have, we've got like 500 people now, haven't we? Yeah, on the group we have. Yeah. So thank you very much to everyone for that. On the Cy and Dan dig, we've got uh, a nearly 2,000 people. So guys, if you're on that Facebook channel, uh, just send me an invite or a message and we'll pull you across onto the group if you're worthy enough. <laughs> of course they are Dan what are you on about? you're all worthy <laughs> me little pop minos so yeah and if you're still listening now you are on a pod mino you are a pod mino yeah you, you've you're earned your stripes blood. you're a pure blood pod mino usually everyone's turned off about eight and a half minutes ago oh, do oh. They? Why, why are we here then let's go <laughs> alright so um, also we had uh, I was contacted by Rob yeah and he asked me to do um a little bit on the jet and token. Oh God, now you're, you're struggle with that. I, no, I am going to struggle. But what's very interesting about it when I started doing the research, um, there wasn't actually much out there on it. We done. Do you not remember when we we first started? Oh, sh- we said we were going to do some research on the jet. Yeah, and we we dig we dug into it for about half a day, and we actually realised we don't even know where it comes from. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> Well, it's just amazing, mate, because um, there was there's nothing on YouTube. Yeah. There's a couple of like one minute videos where you've got the detectorists who have, oh, I found a jet and found a jet and. Yeah. But from what I could see, anyway, um, the jet and is a French token yeah, it's, coin. It, yeah, and they were they were from the 14th century, all the way up to the 18th century. I mean, I found a. I found a token, a French token. I don't know if that is a Jetton. Yeah, it is a French yeah. French token jet. Well, it's, we call them a, a, a French Jetton. That was on the Goldfield. We just call them Jettons, to be fair. A Jetton is French and Raphael Perfenner, German. A coin-like object used in the calculation of accounts. Most commonly yeah. made of copper, brass, and also silver. I've never found a silver one. No, I haven't either. No. I mean, you might have to get really old for those ones, I would think. I found about four Jettons, and one of them I got the the big head crown on in, in the middle of it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put a photo up on and Facebook. What were they, um, what they were, were the tokens for? They they, they were basically um, used for um, trading the food and stuff like that. Um, uh, they were actually used as a currency somewhat because people liked them. They're almost like, because uh, obviously, yeah, if it was a silver one, yeah, it was all like uh, commemorative I, sort of. I thing, suppose yeah. it was used in the same way as you, how you would have got a quarter cut yeah. penny or yeah. a half penny. Yeah, I mean they would have just given it to you as your change, but if it was less than a quarter cut. But like some of the countries, mate, it was like England, France, Netherlands, German, Austria. Poland. Oh yeah, it was all over Europe. Yeah, in yeah the all end. the way to Italy. Even was. Poland, um, but they've all got kind of very similar names to Jetton. Yeah. It's like I think the Polish is Zetton. Yeah. So it sounds a bit like Jetton. Well, it's, it's come from the same. It, it, do you know where place. the name originates from? Um, go on, tell me then, Dun. Right. So the the Jetton name originates from the Calx. It's, it's, from where? It's, it's called a calculated derives from oh yeah couch, okay and it's it's a pebble, so it was uh, the first specially struck jettons were in the 13th century yeah and um, they used to basically it derives from the Roman pebbles okay that sounds cool and they just like carried it on but the French wanted do you know what the French Azazel Azazel and we're gonna we're gonna make this our own sort of like commemorative. Yeah. gaming token whatever you want to do mm-hmm. whatever you want to use it for yeah so it's, they're quite cool things and i suppose at the same time were they using the franc or were they on uh who's the were they using well, the penny then, as well i'm not too sure because obviously the sure. you know the henry's were french english yeah plantagenets so they were probably using the same they were using think, the same currency i think it was introduced by philip the sixth okay fifth sixth yeah i think it's the sixth 
Is that the naughty one that did the Templars? <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and I think he wanted to boast how powerful he was, so he made his own token. Okay, fair enough. And um, a lot of the war soldiers in this way, you find them, if you're in around the Somerset area or something like that, you'll find more tokens than others because obviously where the Battle of Sedgemoor was and stuff like that, they used to carry a lot of jettons because yeah. it was... Um, so is, is it safe to say, though, when, we, when we've found trading tokens, okay. that's all come back from the history of the beginning of the jetton, even well, though it's a well, separate yeah, country. Well, loads of them carry on with the idea of it because obviously like you've got the the George tokens and George George III tokens and you yeah. know like the, the half guineas, they're 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 like take, when you find one of them you're like, ooh, ideal. Yeah. And you think because it's gold, it's gold looking, but it's brass. I do I do wonder though, it says obviously up to the eighteenth century. Yeah. So uh, like the seventeen hundreds and of course, with British coinage in the end of the 1700s, we got obviously the cartwheel pennies yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So um, well, that, I, d- I do wonder, had the co- had the, the currencies debased so much or devalued so much that they were a lot, uh, using a lot more brass and copper? In the- yeah, I think a lot of it had, that was because of the Civil War, because obviously that's when you started getting into the likes of your, your gun money. Do you know what I mean? Your, your gun money pennies and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because cause that was a bear of the, 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 the sum. Yeah, and what was that? Just basically to pay the soldiers out, out yeah. of the old so, spent weapons or something? Yeah, or? so they used to have that as basically an IOU. Okay. Here's, here's your credit. Oh, right, okay, so it was an IOU, but yeah. when you get back, you can use that or, or change it to the value of the sum of. A bit like banknotes today, you know? Like, I, I bet they were that. loving it, though, when people were losing them. Well, in the <laughs> old days, that's why you're finding so much silver and gold in the ground, because the, the, the mineral was the currency. Can you imagine the arguments, though? Yeah. Like, nowadays, you try and take something back to Argus, and they're like, where's your receipt? Yeah. Back then, they'd be like, oh, where's your token? And <laughs> Oh, I dropped it. You got your yeah, there, sure sir. you did. You got your jet in there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You've got them, them big old Chinese dong coins. you see them with the squares in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had one of them, actually. They're cool, aren't they? Some of them are worth a lot of money, guys. Make sure oh. you check your Chinese, your Chinese coins. If you're lucky, I'll read them for you. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. What are we going to talk about next, then, Dan? We're going to talk about the legend. The legend has finally hit the, the banks of the UK. The legion. It's out, it's about, and it's picking up some stuff. And Regerton, about, Regerton got them, haven't they? Regerton, get yourself over fully, the Regerton. Fully stocked. Big shout out to Regerton, actually. They've, <laughs> they're um, they're going to give us a little bit of stuff so we can product review for you guys, so you can have a look what's good, what's bad. I did tell um, them that we're it's, it's no boundaries hold. Like we're going to be honest as yeah. as the day comes or mm-hmm. with this stuff. So if it's if it's rubbish, don't give it to us because it's <laughs> going to get slated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, big shout out to Marcus at, at Regerton. He, yeah, he's a really nice bloke. We've um, I think he's started to listen to the podcast. He, he knows what it's all about. And when it gets warmer, yeah. mate, we'll head down there and actually make uh, contact. Yeah, we we'll go see. Go it. check out the shop and stuff. But he said do a live. That the the legend is absolutely flying out. Mm. But if you go over to Regitons, they will give. You, uh, they they're not doing discounts on these items because there's there's so much demand for them. They can't yeah. possibly keep up with it anyway. But they have got a big stockpile of them. They're ready to fly out. Um, don't just dedicate yourself on a legend you know because i've been doing a lot of lot of looking have you seen what these two s2s are pulling out it's unreal mate yeah no i've seen some really good what finds but- silver gold silver gold that like there was one uh I, I not not far back i think they're on a dig mate you had the do s yeah i think there's a group of five of them i'm not can't mention the names because you don't want to be shouted out yet but um he must have had 20 hammers oh dear yeah and I and I, te- I texted him. I said, "Is that from one hole, one area?" He went, "No, it's an abundance of fields." So this this thing yeah. is powerful. The legend's not been around that long. Well, so we're gonna let's not discredit the legend yet. I think there's gonna be a bit of a battle. I can see a bit of a battle mm-hmm. coming on. Is so. the legend gonna be the new Knox? I I reckon it's gonna be the new Knox. Yeah, because it looks pretty tasty, mate. And to be fair, if I didn't have a Knox right now, I would probably get myself a legend. Yeah, and and uh, only because of the value. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite cheap, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's completely reasonable, man. See, I'm going to fight you on now. I think I'll go for the Duess. Uh, fair enough. I think I, th- <laughs> I think we need to actually... And I think Regerton are stocking the Duest as well, so... Um, yeah, they're on... They're, just go and check out their site, guys, and have a look, see what they've got in stock. 
They've got some awesome stuff. If you need to upgrade, yeah. just give them a call and um, they'd be happy to help you. And guys, like for merchandise kind of stuff, and um, also we know a, another fella, and it's nice, Mercule Bullock. I shouted him out last time we were on there. Get yourself over to Digware UK. Um, he's got some good stuff on there. And um, if you detecting families or groups want merchandise done, get yourself over to him because he's got all the printing means and he does an amazing job, guys. And that's it, really. Um, for us now... Yeah, we're gonna, it's going to be a short one today, isn't it? It's going to be a short one uh, because we are about to go out metal detecting. Ooh. We're doing a bit of a... a, a uh, a bit of a we're going to go wreck, test out my new coil, aren't we? Yeah. He's got, so he's got a little coil. I'm going to go out to my back garden. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to see what we can find in size back garden. Cool, guys. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week. Same time, same place. Take care, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. I can't express how much it means for you guys to be following us, watching us. We really appreciate it. Take care, my pod minos. Later, see you on the next one. Peace out, people.